Hey, what's up? This is Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today I'm going to be talking about Ecto, which is the most popular, really the dominant library for dealing with databases if you're programming in Elixir. Now, you may have heard things like it's an ORM or it's Elixir's version of Active Record neither of which are quite right, since ORMs are object relational mappers. And Elixir is a functional language, it's not object oriented. Um, active record is a design pattern and it's the way that people deal with databases, usually if they're programming in Ruby or often in PHP or some other languages. Ecto is something different. It uses a repository pattern, which is a different design pattern from Active Record. We'll get back to that in a moment. It's a DB wrapper, and it's a query language. You can use it to construct queries to get information out of the database, and to do saves and updates and various aggregate queries as well. So just to go over that one more time, Ecto is not an ORM. It does not use Active Record. It is a DB wrapper and it's also a query language. Let's look a little bit more deeply at what Active Record does versus what a repository does. So say you've got a database, which we'll represent as a cylindrical drawing, as is common, and you've got some data you want to give the database. Well, Active Record makes database queries feel like just checking things on a model. So you have uh, blog post model, you could just say post.id and see what it is, or you could change the post's ID. Maybe there's a command to save, which will you know, propagate all the data back to the database. And it'll just feel like the database disappears. It's everywhere. And Active Record, similarly, just seems like it's a built-in part of your, your model. And you'll find that whatever you want, the data is magically just there. Say you're in a REPL and you're looking at a blog post, you can just type post.author and you'll see all the information for the user who wrote the blog post. Or post.comments and all of the comments associated with it will just be there. And you can you know, look at individual fields, you can update them, saving them is very straightforward, and it'll feel like all the data is magically just there with your object. And sometimes it's too much data. Sometimes you just wanted to, say, show an index page of blog posts, and behind the scenes, Active Record has queried all of the blog posts, every single user who has ever authored a blog post or commented on one, and all of the comments on that blog post, as well as metadata related to those. And it can lead to very difficult to debug performance issues. So it's very convenient when you're starting a project, but you can also get some very difficult to debug performance issues later on. And you know you actually have to do more work to pull less information. Now let's look at what it's like if you're using a repository. You've got your database, and you've got a user who wants to put some data into the database, and you can't all of the communication with the database must go through the repo. It's kind of like a border agent that's keeping track of everything that comes in and everything that goes out. And this can be a little bit frustrating when you're first getting started. But once you learn to work with the repo, you'll find that it can do anything you could have done without using a repo, and you'll have peace of mind knowing exactly when you're fetching data from the database, what you're loading, and when you're doing something that'll cause an update. There's an escape hatch so that you can pass the repo SQL queries directly, and there's also a fair amount of abstraction that'll make things easier and faster for you as time goes on. So with Ecto's repository pattern, you can be sure that the repo gives you just the data you ask for, and only if you ask for it, thus making it much easier to keep track of what you're doing with the database over time as your app grows.